the Nintendo Labo set, which is coming in two different uh, varieties. Uh, both come with a game or software to use with your Nintendo Switch, as well as all of the cardboard pieces. The first set is their variety set that comes with like the fishing pole and like the little dancing man. I, I don't really know what exactly they're calling them. There's uh, like a 13 key piano, the fishing pole, the motorbike. And then there's the one that has uh, like the big backpack that you can put on that turns you into like a virtual robot on the game. The whole mm-hmm. concept is completely crazy to me, but at the same time, it's really awesome. Like it has me mm-hmm. excited that Nintendo is doing something very different. I know whenever they first announced that they were going to be, or the rumor was they were going to be announcing some sort of add-on or accessory for the Nintendo Switch. A lot of people, I guess, just assumed more custom-themed Joy-Cons. But mm-hmm. they released this video, and it's like a bunch of cardboard that you can cut out and do everything with. Um, the robot game seems... I don't exactly know what the name of it is, but if you guys remember a few years back with the Wii U, there was on the Nintendo Treehouse, there was a segment where Miyamoto was using the Wii U gamepad to sort of act like a robot Mm -hmm. on the TV where he played as like a giant robot. It was the same one where they showed off the, the moon base security thing that it ended up turning into the star Fox guard, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ended up becoming that. And it looks like the giant robot fighting game that they had has turned into this robot game that they have coming with Nintendo Labo. There's, like I mentioned, there's a lot of stuff that comes with it. Someone, uh, I was reading that the piano itself took two hours for someone to like put together for the first time. Um, that could have been exaggerated a little bit, though. I, I don't really know um, how true the source on that is, but if it is two hours to put together this piano, then... I, I don't really know what to think about. Like it's something like I'm excited for it to play around with it. I'm sure it's something like my daughter is she'll be turning three later this year. I don't know if she's quite old enough to play with it um, or try to build it. But what do you guys think about this? Because it seems like something that is obviously directed straight towards kids, but then there also has to be the interest from the parents or adults to help them put it together because. Like the robot suit has like a lot of strings and pulleys and stuff, and yeah, uh, it it seems a little bit too complicated for just a kid to set and put together themselves. So, uh, starting with our special guest, what are your thoughts on this? Whenever they first announced it, and everything that you've been seeing. Well, I'm pretty sure the parents are going to be building it. It's <laughs> almost certainly. <laughs> it's like that As project parent, that I gets assigned. Confirm. Yeah, it's like that project that gets assigned in class, and then like you know the parent did it, and really not the kid. <laughs> you know, so yeah. no, I think I love it. I really do love it. It's really nice. Uh, I for me, it's like it brings me back to when you know, like Pokemon didn't have figurines. You know, so we had to draw it out and cut it out and make it our own. So this is a good example of you know, use what you have. Um, it's very imaginative it's very creative and i think kids need that you know these days because my first thought when when we were like children was going outside and wanting to play you know and these days i don't see as many kids out on the street wanting to play and you know more so on the internet and video games and all that stuff so this i think this is amazing for kids especially i love it i'm gonna build it <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh so what about you Dan? What what were your initial thoughts on I'm, I guess I'm not surprised that it's uh, it's appealing to you, Chris. It's how crafty you are already. But um, no, yeah, I, I didn't even think yeah, about that. This yeah. goes perfect. This is it was pretty much a big greatest. giant craft, right? <laughs> um, I think it's really neat. Um, my biggest concern is I really worry about like the quality of the cardboard degrading. You know, like with use. Like that is my biggest concern. Is like how much can you reuse it after you build it? Am I gonna have to be like you know harvesting all my recycling to (laughs) to use for cardboard like because you can just basically download the um 
like the printouts with the designs and then use any cardboard if you really wanted to, right? Yeah, but so, the, the initial purchase of, uh, I think it's it, yeah. like $60 for the uh, variety pack and then the robot pack is $80. Um, yeah. That cost I, does bring in the software itself, so... Yeah, it would be neat to have like a less, slightly less expensive version that came with just the software. I think that should be an option, maybe, uh, to maybe even even like a later release, to uh, like have the initial launch with all the sets and stuff, and then a later release Labo with just the software. But um, like I like I said, it's really cool though. Like I really want to build this stuff. Like I saw that I was like that robot suit. I want that. But then I'm like, where am I gonna put it in my house? Well, like even, even um, with the, the robot know. suit, like it has the cardboard uh, because it comes from the backpack to your elbow and then from your elbow mm-hmm. to your hand. And it's like that's fine for a kid's hand, but it's like if an adult buys this and wants to play with it, they're going to have to like. Oh yeah. That's the thing is, I'm not gonna, yeah. Like I have a five year old, he's not gonna build this whole thing by himself. So I'm gonna end up building it with him. <laughs> and there's no way I'm not gonna play with it if I do <laughs> I'm yeah. just putting that out there. And then and so, kids are kids, right? So I yeah. hope it's sturdy enough to that's, survive. That's my yeah, well, is like he's gonna destroy it. <laughs> the cardboard like, actually, it's generally did pretty good. Thick. But so like, it, it doesn't look like little thin like, cardboard. With two C's. Um <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, though, is, like, he, he's generally pretty good, like, about not destroying things. Like, he's been very... He's really good with his... Uh, he has a 3DS, and he's, like, very careful with the game carts, and, and, you know, he knows to hold a disc by the middle with his finger. Like, he's... I've taught him well. <laughs> protecting software. <laughs> but, like, with the cardboard pieces... So, like, him playing with the Switch and stuff is fine. I have, I have confidence that he's not going to, like, smash it, right? Because, you know, he knows not to. With the cardboard, the whole point is it's a more active play. So I'm like, okay, he's going to smash the cardboard for sure. <laughs> you know, and then I'm going to maybe have to rebuild it or fix it. And I'm just wondering, like, how how much I can, like, take this long term. You know, it might be a fun at few afternoons, but is it going to be, like, a, a sustainable... I don't know, not a sustainable future, but like, is it going to be a game that I can play in the long term as well? Yeah. Or is it just going to be like, is it's going to be like, come back where to. I played it for a few weeks and that was it. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. That the, Other than that, like, I do, I think I might still get it because it does look really fun, especially some of the, like, the whole having the, uh, the steering, like, it's not, not a steering wheel, like the handlebars and like the switch sits in it and then you're playing mm-hmm. a driving game and, Stuff like that. Like, they look really cool. Um, so I probably might get it anyways, just because I'm a total sellout <laughs> when it comes to Nintendo stuff. Yeah, it, it makes me right... think if uh, any of this could be incorporated into future games. Like, they showed the fishing mini game. obviously. A lot of this looks like stuff they would be able to implement into, like, Animal Crossing-style yeah. games, or, like, even uh, Pokemon games. Have, there's like a lot of fishing incorporated in it. Uh, Zelda, like Ocarina of Time, typically uh, some Zelda games have fishing mini games. So it makes me wonder mm-hmm. if at any point if they'll bring some of these Labo stuff over to give you the option to use them in other games. So you aren't just stuck with the one set of mini games that it comes with. Like, is there going to like how there was Wii Sports and then Wii Sports Resort. Like, is there going to be another mm-hmm. iteration of this? And then, if there are, is it going to have its own set of card stuff? So yeah, that's. And then I I really hope that you can buy the full set with all of the cardboard pieces and the software, as it said, for like sixty or eighty dollars. But if you were just buying the cardboard, I hope that they have something towards like twenty dollars or something. Mm-hmm. So. In case, as you were saying, if something does break or a drink or something spills on it, it gets wet, starts like, crumbling, isn't as strong, so it can't hold its shape. Um, mm-hmm. I hope that they do something to where you can buy extra pieces and you are not having to spend like sixty dollars every single time something tears up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I'm so. a little, I'm a little stuck on the price point though. Like if it's not. Expensive. Like I just, it's not going to be an issue for me, because Nintendo charges. They don't like to sell things at a loss, and they have a business. But then, like, I just know there's going to be a lot of people complaining 
without paying that much money for cardboard. And, like, they're kind of missing the concept of it, I think. But, um, you know, I just see that being a complaint that's going to come up a lot. Yeah. I think so, too. Yeah. As long as they put out consistent, like, content for this, like, you know, if it's, if it's mm-hmm. like, maybe a skateboard in the future or something like that, I don't know. But, you know, like, just more content. I think that's the most important thing is that people will pay that price if there's more to it than what's shown. And I think that's... That's the case because you can pretty much do anything with cardboard, right? When we were kids, I'm pretty sure we made like a whole house out of <laughs> oh, a yeah. giant TV box, right? <laughs> yeah. So it, I think it, when it comes down to that, I think that's it'll work. Uh, I, I think so. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Nintendo mm-hmm. has to has to up their game on this one a little bit, I think, to in yeah. order to sell it. And like the, I was looking at the the way some of it works, like the the Joy-Con on the piano, like. You set the switch console inside, so like you're seeing the screen on it. Then you like have to put the Joy-Con with the IR sensor into a little hole. And when you press the keys, at first I was thinking maybe it would tap the screen, and that's what is causing the notes to play. But it's the IR sensor and the Joy-Con. Um, the way that you build the keyboard, there are little silver stickers on the inside oh. of it for each of the keys. And the IR sensor, depending on where the sticker is or like which one's reflecting light back at it, is the note that you're playing. So huh. it, it's not as simple as when you download like a keyboard on your iPad and you can just touch the screen. Like there's a lot of really complicated tech to do something very very simple. Mm-hmm. And it it makes me I wonder w- if they even thought about having it tap the screen. <laughs> the, <laughs> some, someone on Nintendo is going to watch this. They're like, oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> they just bring the cardboard to the screen. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's like there's, there's, there's a lot of really, really ingenious ways to do things very simple with this. And I understand yeah. that they might want to have different ways to use uh, the Joy-Cons. So that way, yeah. all of the different pieces of the Switch are involved. Um, but then it gets even more complicated with the robots. I think like there was, uh, you have to put a Joy-Con in the headband that you wear for the robot suit. There's one in the back. There's ones on your hands. So like some of these Wait, to fully you need use more all Joy-Cons? of them. Yeah, like you need like four oh. Joy-Cons or like two different sets of Joy-Cons to fully use some of this stuff. Um, ah. So, I mean, I have four Joy Cons and a Pro controller and stuff, but I, I feel like a lot of people have a Switch and they have just the Switch and two Joy Cons. So that might be also another sticking point. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Mm. So, like, uh, that, that's essentially my final thoughts on it. Is like, it, it basically seems like a lot of very complicated ways to do things that would have otherwise been very simple mini games. Um, Mm -hmm. But it shows how creative Nintendo is with this stuff. It's like, instead of just allowing the cardboard to tap the screen to make the sounds, they're using the IR sensor. So, uh, starting with Finally, use for the IR. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Instead of eating hamburger mini game. Exactly. So, (laughs) what are your thoughts on, uh, like, just final thoughts before we move on to the next new story of the... uh, well, Nintendo it's funny because <laughs> I'm very, I'm very imaginative. So actually, when you were talking, I like was picturing what the conference meeting must have looked like. Like, hey guys, <laughs> I have I have an idea. We're going to use cardboard. And like, wait, 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 what? And he's like, no, no, hear me out. <laughs> and then he just starts like pitching it. You know, I wonder who came up with this because it's just really. I I hope really he had like a easy. prototype and he no, walked into the conference room with quick. the robo suit and he's like, this is what we're doing. <laughs> That would be the best. That Just would be the, walks see, in that's with the, the perfect robot imagery. <laughs> and they're like, oh no. no. <laughs> He's gone crazy. <laughs> oh. But I like it. I I cannot wait to see what they come up with. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be more Viardi packs to to buy and to purchase and make and and I'm I'm excited. I think it's really cool. And again, it gives an opportunity for kids to be really creative. You know, instead of sticking their face in a screen, it's like they actually have stuff that they can build. It's like Legos. Because I I grew up with Legos. So it's like 
every Christmas, my parents would give me like the Lego set and I would be sitting there trying to build everything, you know, and, and I think this is like a bigger scale. I would have loved to have this when I was a kid. So. Yeah, it, it is something <laughs> that like, even if uh, you are interested in one of the little mini games that comes with it, it looks like there's a lot of variety there to where you'll find something that will interest you. And I can imagine every single kid wanting to just put on the big robot suit and have fun with it. But I can imagine the terror of like a kid having the backpack on and everything and like, sitting down or falling over and crushing yeah. all of it because there's like the whole pulley system with the strings and everything. So there's a, a lot of stuff there, but it, I, I brought up the, like the way that they turned the one mini game into the Star Fox guard game because the robot game was first introduced. And from what I've been seeing online, this was, uh, I guess, Miyamoto and some of the other developing teams or people that was in charge uh, trying to take the ideas that they had from previous games or concepts that they couldn't turn into a full game and trying to repackage them and reuse them in new and inventive ways. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering, like, what many games and stuff that we haven't seen that are also included in this? Like maybe we'll see something else that Nintendo showed off at one point, but never got around to actually releasing or using. So it, mm -hmm. it seems like this is just a fun pack of a lot of different uh, things that they couldn't necessarily sell as a single product. So they're just compiling it all into this. So. Mm. And it releases on April 20th, so in about two months from now. So I'm, I'm really interested. Are, are you going to be buying this, Chris? Yes, yes. of course. I want to paint it. <laughs> yeah, that, that was another thing. It comes with all of the, the stickers, the designs. And of course. I'm uh, so excited. I actually, I really love this. Um, but I, yeah, I'm going to just be really careful for the yeah. first for the most part. So, so Daniel should just dress up in, in all the all the gear, to be honest. Yeah. So which you one are you going to... I would love to. Take a picture, and then I'll share it. <laughs> uh, no, <it> says. <laughs> which, which one are you planning on buying? Uh, because there are the two different ones, the variety pack and then the robot pack. I think the variety, because I like, I like options, for okay. sure. I, I like to, you know, have, like, different things that I want to make, and, and Honestly, I'll, I'll be happy with any of them. I just, I just like the fact that you can customize it. <laughs> All right. And what about to be you? Honest, I really just want to paint it. I, I like the look of the variety pack too. I'm actually just gonna to gander through the both of them because I haven't really. But um, the robot kit is pretty much. It looks like just the robot, which is cool. I think that's the coolest part. So it kind of sucks that I have to get that separate. Um, but it looks like there's just more to do for with the variety pack toy yeah. con one so yeah it's uh yeah it looks really cool i like the little the, all the little robots and stuff like i like little crafts and stuff and yeah they have yeah. the like remote controlled uh yeah. bikes and stuff that you can build with the other one that like uses the vibrations of the controllers to actually move around which is mm -hmm. really interesting so. You should probably, um, if you do do happen to get the robot one, you should probably make it look like Flood from Mario Sunshine or like oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be pretty awesome. I think that'd be pretty cool. Try to make it look exactly like that, and then that would run be around really cool. the house. <laughs> yeah, you the, should get this. The, <laughs> You've the, clearly the, thought about this more than I. Have. <laughs> the cool thing about this is, if you are like interested in like crafting and stuff where it has the little it almost looks like a cardboard stick person that you attach to the joy con to do this like you could potentially make a uh, little cardboard figures that looks like mario luigi Link, and all of mm -hmm. the other stuff so you can get creative yourself with it uh, but moving on to our next news story daniel why don't you go ahead and take us through this the uh N nintendo life news story on 4K and yeah. VR. So uh, Nintendo, I'll just read the headline here from Nintendo <laughs> Life. Nintendo reiterates that it is not interested in virtual reality or 4K support. 